And now, now it's time for a new president. And all they want us to do is pick a new president. I feel like, didn't we just get out of a fucked up relationship? Maybe we don't need a president right now. Can we be single as a country for a while and maybe date a president, see how that work out for a couple months? This shit is bullshit. Warning. All displays of negativity will be deliciously repackaged and probably returned to sender. Only good vibes allowed beyond this point. Now if you're ready, come on in. Welcome to Facebook Conversations. What's going on, Champagne Gang? Fierce fam, confidants. <laughs> if this is your first time here, hi, I'm the Empress, and you are joining me in the chalet for Fizz Feed Conversations Trump Watch 2024. And for today, we are discussing the presidential debates from last night. Ciao. So here's my question, right? So what are you supposed to do if you don't want neither candidate? I mean, because you have one candidate that is a convicted felon with over 34 felonies and facing more, and you have another one who looks like he was produced by AI. What are we doing? Like, what are we doing as a country where these are our only two viable options? I mean, this is like Wiley Coyote trying to chase the roadrunner. Only problem is you don't know which one is Wiley and which one is the roadrunner. How are we supposed to make any kind of uniform decision when these two are our candidates? You have one that refuses to answer any questions, and then you have another one that gets stumbled trying to figure out which question he's answering. What are we doing? What are we doing? I mean, at this point, each of them spent more time defending their positions and what they did when they were in office, as opposed to telling us what they are going to do if they are re-elected to office. Isn't that the whole point of the debate? To let us know what we'll be getting as president instead of rehearsing and regurgitating what you did and what you messed up from the past? We can't fix that, but we can change what's gonna happen in the future. But how the hell are we gonna make, a, make an intelligent decision when this is what we're presented with? I vote Cat Williams anything better than this because what are we gonna do when it's time to vote are they ever gonna tell us what they're going to change about the economy well Trump definitely has y'all just not paying attention <laughs> y'all not paying attention to this project 2025 that's coming down the line here's my problem with Trump right Trump is I keep telling y'all Trump is the wild card Trump got so much planned for y'all if he becomes president, but he's not speaking on it in the debates. He's speaking on it behind the scenes and through other parties, but we're just not paying attention to it. So let's get ready to get into it. Let's get into some of these points from the debate last night. So on your way in, go ahead and grab you a glass of champagne off the table. Grab you one of those chase chairs and kick your feet up and let's get into these presidential debates. So um, it started off with Biden. So basically, they were talking about the economy and whether or not it was an economic boom or bust, right? So Biden started off strong. He was flexing about his economic achievements like he was showing off his latest yacht, right? <laughs> job growth this infrastructure that basically saying i turned this economy into a buffet and everyone's eating but trump really wasn't having it he was calling biden's economic policies a recipe for disaster like he was gordon ramsay roasting a failed souffle or something honey so then they got into health care and baby biden went all dr feel good on us right talking about how he's been lowering prescription prices and he's giving the affordable care act a whole glow up he might as well have said who needs a genie i've got your three health care wishes right here he talked about dropping the prices of insulin so they're no longer 400 dollars, but only about 15 and how the elderly don't have to pay any more than 200 dollars for any and all of their medications trump fired back like health care more like scare care and promised to fix everything with the wave of his presidential hand right so then they get into climate control and our boy joe went all green on us and he promised to save the planet one turbine at a time he was all like you want clean energy hold my solar panel i got the answer but then trump clapped back like joe's green dreams are making us see red he starts claiming that all of biden's policies were just blowing hot air and nothing was accomplished 
So then we get into the foreign policy feuds and Biden started defending his intentional moves like he was playing risk on Saturday night, saying his strategy was all about diplomatic wins and alliance spins. Trump, on the other hand, called Biden's foreign policy a game of where's Waldo, claiming that it was all over the place and we're still trying to figure it out. So now for Trump, and remember each of them are asked a question, they have two minutes to speak, they have one minute of a rebuttal um and then the moderators have one minute to decide who responds or whatever so trump claps back and talking about the economy roast trump came in hot calling biden's economic plans inflation nation and promising to make your wallet fat again he was basically saying vote for me and we'll all be swimming in dollars like scrooge mcduck because you know that's what all of this is like an animated series so then he hit the immigration station and trump was all about border talk this border talk that everything was border 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 immigration 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 inflation 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 right so trump said that biden's letting everyone in like it's a barbecue cookout he's promising stricter controls while biden rolled his eyes at Trump so hard baby you could almost hear it and I know he felt it so then he gets into law and order Trump went full action hero claiming he's the only thing standing between your neighborhood and complete chaos law and order baby he said and Biden countered with like <laughs> you mean law and disorder of course Biden brought up January 6th and in typical Trump fashion he answered nothing on foreign relations Trump definitely didn't hold back calling Biden's dealings with Ukraine and China weak sauce and promising to bring the big guns back to the table. Biden shot back with big guns more like loose cannon and it was a consistent back and forth. So basically it was a ish show of finger pointing. You messed up the country. No you messed up the country. No you gave me a mess. No I gave you perfect. You created a mess. Come on y'all. What are we doing? Give ourselves a chance. Sheesh. Let's take a look at some of these clips from the debate last night. Biden, inflation has slowed, but prices remain high. Since you took office, the price of essentials has increased. For example, a basket of groceries that cost $100 then now costs more than $120. And typical home prices have jumped more than 30%. What do you say to voters who feel they are worse off under your presidency than they were under President Trump? We've got to take a look at what I was left when I became president and what Mr. Trump left me. We had an economy that was in free fall. The pandemic was so badly handled. Many people were dying. All he said was, it's not that serious. Just inject a little bleach in your own. You'll be all right. The economy collapsed. There were no jobs. Unemployment rate rose to 15%. It was terrible. And so what we had to do is try to put things back together again. And that's exactly what we began to do. We created 15,000 new jobs. And we brought out another position where we have 800,000 new manufacturing jobs. But there's more to be done. There's more to be done. Working class people are still in trouble. Where the kitchen table, if things weren't able to be met during the month, it was a problem. The price of eggs, the price of gas, the price of housing, the price of a whole range of things. That's why I'm working so hard to make sure I deal with those problems. That we're going to make sure that we reduce the price of housing. We're going to make sure we build two, two million new units. We're going to make sure we cap rents so corporate greed can't take over. The combination that I was left with in corporate greed is the reason why we're in this problem right now. In addition to that, we're in a situation where if you have to take a look at all that was done in this administration, he didn't do much at all. By the time he left, there were things were in chaos, literally chaos. And so we put things back together. We created, I said, those jobs. We make sure we had a situation where we now we brought down the price of prescription drugs, which is a major issue for many people. It's to $15 for, for uh, an insulin shot as opposed to $400. No senior has to pay more than $200 for any drug, all the drugs they can include beginning next year. In a situation, that make, and we're going to make that available to everybody, to all Americans. So we're working to bring down the price of around the kitchen table, and that's what we're going to get done. Here's one of the things that we have to understand, right? Because everyone's constantly talking about how Trump gave us money. We got a stimulus package. We also talk about how people were able to sit at home and collect unemployment checks that were probably two, three times the amount of the check they would get if they were 
actually on a job. The problem with this ideology is because that's the reason a lot of people want Trump backing off free money, stimulus checks. The problem with that is if you don't have anything to refill what you put out, then you create a larger deficit, which becomes a larger problem. See, this is the part that we missed. It's just like your checking account. If you do more paying out of your checking account, then you get money back into your checking account. What happens? Checks start to bounce, accounts start getting overdrawn, and now you're scrambling trying to figure out how to get your money back up in your account because you didn't have enough coming in to cover what you had going out. So although the stimulus is good, the things that we received during the pandemic, although those things are actually good and they help our economy per se, it also hurt our economy if we weren't doing anything to replace the money that was getting paid out. Do you know how much money was paid out in PPP loans alone? Fraudulently? We're not talking about the businesses who needed it to stay afloat. We're talking about the individuals who applied for it and got it, knowing they didn't have businesses, knowing they were collecting food stamps. They were getting a check from the state, yet they were still telling the government that they had businesses that were worth 600 to a million dollars. Do you realize how much that hurt the economy? See, we don't think about that part when we're asking for everything free, free, free. How are we going to recoup if we start getting everything free? That's the question. Thank you, President Trump. We have the greatest economy in the history of our country, and we have never done so well. Every, everybody was amazed by it. Other countries were copying us. We got hit with COVID. And when we did, we spent the money necessary so we wouldn't end up in a Great Depression, the likes of which we had in 1929 by the time we finished. So we did a great job. We got a lot of credit for the economy, a lot of credit for the military and no wars and so many other things. Everything was rocking good. But the thing we never got the credit for and we should have is getting us out of that COVID mess. Uh, he created mandates that was a disaster for our country. But other than that, we had we had given them back a a country where the stock market actually was higher than pre-COVID, and nobody thought that was even possible. Uh, the only jobs he created are for illegal immigrants and bounce-back jobs, a bounce-back from the COVID. He has not done a good job. He's done a poor job, and inflation's killing our country. It is absolutely killing us. Here's one point that I have to agree with him on, right? Because inflation does seriously hurt our economy. The fact that when you go to the store, you have to make real life decisions. It is almost cheaper to order McDonald's from DoorDash to feed your family than it is to go to the grocery store and buy meals to feed your family because it's so expensive. I remember when a bag of party wing was $9.99. Why is it almost 25 now? I remember when a simple McDonald's Happy Meal, I'm sorry, I remember when a simple McDonald's Big Mac meal was what, $4.99 and you paid 70 cents to super supersize it. Now a Big Mac meal is damn near $15. What are we doing? Maybe it's because we're spending so much time focusing everywhere else in the world instead of on our own country. There it is. I understand the whole thing on foreign policy and foreign aid and we got to make sure we're protected. But when we spend more time protecting other countries and policing other countries than we do policing and protecting our own, that's why you have white supremacists marching out of wood with swastikas on their clothes and nobody's stopping it. So I can agree with him on the point of inflation, but also understand this fact. We expect when a president takes office for them to come in the office and make all these changes from day one as if the president has ultimate power and ultimate say so if the president had ultimate power and ultimate say so then trump would not be fighting the senate right now on the claim that the constitution gives the president ultimate power if in fact the president already had ultimate power there would be no need for this argument now with it but the fact is if we paid attention in school there was something in the presidency called checks and balances so no one person had ultimate control and ultimate say. It has to go through steps. It has to go through checks to make sure it balances out. So when we expect these presidents to be miracle workers, they can't and they cannot. That's why sometimes bigger than the presidential race, you need to be paying attention to who's being put into the Senate, who's being put into the House, who's being put into Congress, because they're the ones with the vote. They're the ones with the power. The president doesn't have as much as you think. Thank you, President Biden. Well, look, the greatest economy in the world, he, he's the only one who thinks that, I think. I don't know anybody else who thinks he had the greatest economy in the world. And, you know, the fact of the matter is that uh, we found ourselves in a situation where his, his economy, he rewarded the wealthy. 
He had the largest tax cut in American history, $2 trillion. He raised a deficit larger than any president has in any one term. He's the only president other than Herbert Hoover who's had lost more jobs than he had when he began, since Herbert Hoover. The idea that he did something that was significant in the military, you know, when he was president, they were still killing people in Afghanistan. He didn't do anything about that. When he was president, we were still finding ourselves in a position where you had a notion that we were the safe country. The truth is, I'm the only president this century that doesn't have any, this, this decade, that doesn't have any troops dying anywhere in the world like he did. Uh, President Trump, uh, I want to follow up if I can. You Am want I allowed to, to respond to him? Well, I'm going to ask you a follow-up. You can do whatever you want with the minute that we give you. Um, I, I want to follow up. You, you want to impose a 10% tariff on all goods coming into the U.S. How will you ensure that that doesn't drive prices even higher? It's not going to drive them higher. It's just going to cause countries that have been ripping us off for years, like China and many others, in all fairness to China. It's going to just force them to pay us a lot of money, reduce our deficit tremendously, and give us a lot of power for other things. But he, would, he made a statement. The only thing he was right about is I gave you the largest tax cut in history. I also gave you the largest regulation cut in history. That's why we had all the jobs. And the jobs went down, and then they bounced back. And he's taking credit for bounce-back jobs. You can't do that. He also said he inherited 9% inflation. No, he inherited almost no inflation, and it stayed that way for 14 months, and then it blew up under his leadership because they spent money like a bunch of people that didn't know what they were doing, and they don't know what they were doing. It was the worst, probably the worst administration in history. There's never been. And as far as Afghanistan is concerned, I was getting out of Afghanistan, but we were getting out with dignity, with strength, with power. He got out. It was the most embarrassing day in the history of our country's life. President Trump, over the last eight years, under both of your administrations, the national debt soared to record highs. And according to a new nonpartisan analysis, President Trump, your administration approved $8.4 trillion in new debt. Well, so far, President Biden, you've approved $4.3 trillion in new debt. So former President Trump, many of the tax cuts that you signed into law are set to expire next year. You want to extend them and go even further, you say. With the U.S. facing trillion-dollar deficits and record debt, why should top earners and corporations pay even less in taxes than they do now? Because the tax cut spurred the greatest economy that we've ever seen just prior to COVID. And even after COVID, it was so strong that we were able to get through COVID much better than just about any other country. But we spurred, that tax spurred. Now, when we cut the taxes, as an example, the uh, corporate tax was cut down to 21 percent from 39 percent plus beyond that. Uh, we took in more revenue with much less tax, and companies were bringing back trillions of dollars back into our country. The country was going like never before, and we were ready to start paying down debt. We were ready to start using the liquid gold right under our feet, the oil and gas right under our feet. We were going to have something that nobody else has had. We got hit with COVID. We did a lot to fix it. I gave him an unbelievable situation with all of the therapeutics and all of the things that we came up with. We gave him something great. Remember, more people died under his administration, even though we had largely fixed it. More people died under his administration than our administration, and we were right in the middle of it, something which a lot of people don't like to talk about. But he had far more people dying in his administration. He did the mandate, which is a disaster, mandating it. The vaccine went out. He did a mandate on the vaccine, which is the thing that people most objected to about the vaccine. And he did a very poor job, just a very poor job. And I will tell you, not only poor there, but throughout the entire world, we're no longer respected as a country. They don't respect our leadership. They don't respect the United States anymore. We're like a third world nation between weaponization of his election, trying to go after his political opponent, all of the things he's done. We've become like a third world nation. And it's a shame. Now, this is a section that I would have to agree with Trump on, but I would have to make a little adjustment on it because we haven't become like a third world country. We are almost a third world country. When you look at the amount of people who are homeless, the amount of people who cannot pay their rent, the amount of people who cannot buy food and don't have the government resources to help them get food, we are almost a third world country. One of the things that happened during the pandemic was so many people lost their home. We're not just talking about renters, we're talking about homeowners. Lost their homes because businesses were shut down. There was no jobs. If you weren't essential, you were not working. So if you could not work, how were you going to pay your bills? So you were going up against bully mortgage companies that did not care that we were in a pandemic. All they wanted was their money. And there was nothing set in place to help protect those individuals. So yes, Trump was passing out money, passing out money, passing out money. But what he was not passing out was
was protection. There was protection for renters, but there was not protection for homeowners. There was no system put in place so that after this was over, we would be able to bounce back. And then the presidency switched hands, much like a relay race, and now the new president has to try to pick up where the old president left off. That's where we run into the issues with, when the presidency changes hands. I remember when I was working in the restaurant industry when I was younger, and the one thing that they used to tell us in the restaurant industry is that when your shift gets ready to end and you get ready to leave, what you're supposed to do is sit with the next shift to let the next shift know what happened on the previous shift and what to be prepared for. Why is there nothing set up in place so that there is a sufficient transfer of hands of the presidency so there's a complete understanding of what's on the table and what's going to be transitioned to the table once the president changes. That's what I want to know. Because I would also have to agree with Biden that Biden inherited an issue. He inherited a problem. It wasn't a problem that he brought on. I can't even say it was a problem that Trump brought on. It was brought on by a pandemic. Whoever was playing in the biblical plague jar and released COVID-19 onto the world. But because we weren't prepared for a pandemic, everyone is in a frenzy trying to figure out how do we handle the pandemic and how do we make sure the people are okay. And in doing so, making the people okay for a little bit, we actually made it harder for people in the long run. Because what happened when that moratorium ended and people still didn't have jobs or money to pay their rent? Because it wasn't like the back rent got erased. They still had to pay it. So now you have a bunch of homelessness. So when I say I can agree with him that we right around the corner from being a third world country, I absolutely agree with him. But we cannot fault one man for that. The damage he's done to our country, and I'd love to ask him and Will why he allowed millions of people to come in here from prisons, jails, and mental institutions to come into our country and destroy our country. President Trump, we will get to immigration uh, later in this block. President Biden, uh, I want to give you an opportunity to respond to this question about the national debt. He had the largest national debt of any president in four year period, number one. Number two, he that two trillion dollar tax cut benefited the very wealthy. What I'm gonna do is fix the tax system. For example, we have a thousand trillionaires in America. I mean billionaires in America. And what's happening? They're in a situation where they in fact pay eight point two percent in taxes. If they just paid twenty four percent, twenty five percent, either one of those numbers, they'd raise five hundred million dollars, million dollars, I should say, in a ten year period. You'd be able to rent rip out his debt, we'd be able to help make sure that all those things we need to do, child care, elder care, making sure that we continue to strengthen our health care system, making sure that we're able to make every single solitary person uh, eligible for what I've been able to do with the uh, with, with, with the COVID, excuse me, with um, dealing with everything we have to do with, uh, look, if we finally beat Medicare. Uh, yeah, I was sitting there like, come on, right? You got it. You got it. Come on. You can do it. <laughs> but y'all, we not going to sit here and act like this man ain't in his 80s. Not going to do that. And I think for his age, he did an absolutely damn good job. With the amount of information that he had to remember, with no teleprompter, no team to give him cues, just notes that he's able to jot down on a pad, I think he did absolutely good. So we not going to sit here and act like Trump did much better when he didn't answer not one damn question. We not going to do that. We are not going to do that. And let's not forget, Trump is only three blocks behind Biden anyway. So what do you think if Trump got in office and is elected president, what do you think he's going to look like in another few years? They both up in age. What is Trump 78 and Biden 81? They only a few blocks behind each other. What are we saying? At the end of the day, both of them are too old to run for the presidency. Trump needs to sit back and be somebody's business advisor for the presidency. And Biden can be somebody on somebody's team as the, as the think tank. Because the man does still have cognitive ability. He was able to answer questions. He might have sounded like the godfather when doing it. I'll make you an offer you can't refuse. But he still answered the question. So get a man his just the Thank you, President uh, Biden. President Trump? Well, he's right. He did beat Medicare. He beat it to death. And he's destroying Medicare because all of these people are coming in. They're putting them on Medicare. They're putting them on Social Security. They're going to destroy Social Security. This man is going to single-handedly destroy Social Security. These millions and millions of people coming in, they're trying to put them on Social Security. He will wipe out Social Security. He will wipe out Medicare. So he was right in the way he finished that sentence. And it's a shame. What's happened to our country 
in the last four years is not to be believed. Foreign countries, I'm friends with a lot of people, they cannot believe what happened to the United States of America. We're no longer respected. They they don't like us. We give them everything they want and they, they think we're stupid. They think we're very stupid people. What we're doing for other countries and they do nothing for us. What this man has done is absolutely criminal. Now, this is an important point that Trump just made. And let me help you understand why it's an important point. Because we open up our borders to everyone to be able to come in. And don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that individuals shouldn't be entitled to a better way of life. That's not what I'm saying. But they shouldn't be entitled to a better way of life than the individuals in the country where they are entering. There's the problem. You got to look at it like this, right? We open the border. We allow Mexicans to come in. They're able to come in and get a taste of the American dream, right? So they're able to come in and bring their families and they're able to make money. Well, let's just say they make $100 in America, U.S. dollars. So they take that $100 U.S. dollars and they send it back home. Back home, $100 U.S. dollars is worth a thousand pesos in Mexico. So just by taking a hundred US dollars and sending it back to their family in Mexico, their family in Mexico, Mexico just came up $900. Here's where we run into the problem. If I'm Nigerian, let's look at the Nigerian Naira. If I'm Nigerian and I come to the United States and I make money, if I only make one dollar, one US dollar, one US dollar compared to the Nigerian Naira, is worth 1535 Nigerian Naira. So that means if I had a hundred US dollars, that converted to the Nigerian Naira is $153,542. So everybody's able to come into the United States and get a come up except Americans who live in the United States. That's a problem. That's a problem. So as a Nigerian, all I got to do is come to the United States and make a thousand dollars and go back to my country and be virtually rich? Where can Americans go and come up? Don't worry. I'll wait in the words of Cat Williams. So no, immigrants shouldn't be able to come in and get the best, the best tax breaks. How do you think they're able to have so many gas stations, the immigrants are? Nail salons, they get the highest tax breaks. Matter of fact, unless it's changed, I think for a period of time, they don't even have to pay taxes. So how is it that foreigners are able to come into the United States and get more privileges than those of us who live in the United States? It's a problem and it's a problem that needs to be addressed. But I don't think the issue is closing the border and not allowing people to come in for a better way of life. Maybe we need to start looking at the export of the U.S. dollar to these countries so that they so that they can figure out a way to stop individuals in other countries from coming up off the American dollar. That's the problem. It's not what you do here. It's the fact that what you do here, you're able to send back there. Drop in the comments and let me know what you think about that. I'd love to know your opinion. Thank you, President Trump. Dana? This is the first presidential election since the Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade. This morning, the court ruled on yet another abortion case, temporarily allowing emergency abortions to continue in Idaho, despite that state's restrictive ban. Former President Trump, you take credit for the decision to overturn Roe v. Wade, which returned the issue of abortion to the states. Correct. However, the federal government still plays a role in whether or not women have access to abortion pills. They're used in about two thirds of all abortions. As president, would you block abortion medication? First of all, the Supreme Court just approved the abortion pill and I agree with their decision to have done that and I will not block it. And if you look at this whole question that you're asking, a complex but not really complex, 51 years ago, you had Roe v. Wade, and everybody wanted to get it back to the states. Everybody, without exception. Democrats, Republicans, liberals, conservatives. Everybody wanted it back. Religious leaders. And what I did is I put three great Supreme Court justices on the court, and they happened to vote in favor of killing Roe v. Wade and moving it back to the states. This is something that everybody wanted. Now, 10 years ago or so, they started talking about how many weeks and how many this and getting into other things. But every legal scholar throughout the world, the most respected, wanted it brought back to the states. I did that. Now the states are working it out. If you look at Ohio, it was a decision that was, it was a, an end result that was a little bit more liberal than you would have thought. Uh, Kansas, I would say the same thing. Uh, Texas is different. Florida is different. But they're all making their own decisions right now. And right now, the states control it. That's the vote of the people. Like Ronald Reagan, I believe in the exceptions. I am a person that believes. And frankly, I think it's important to believe in the exceptions. Some people, you have to follow your heart. Some people don't believe in that. But I believe in the exceptions for 
rape incest and the life of the mother. I think it's very important. Some people don't follow your heart, but you have to get elected also. And because that has to do with other things, you got to get elected. The problem they have is they're radical because they will take the life of a child in the eighth month, the ninth month, and even after birth. After birth, if you look at the former governor of Virginia, he was willing to do this. He said, we'll put the baby aside and we'll determine what we do with the baby, meaning we'll kill the baby. What happened is we brought it back to the states and the country is now coming together on this issue. It's been a great thing. Thank you. President Biden? It's been a terrible thing, what you did. The fact is that the vast majority of constitutional scholars supported Roe when it was decided. Supported Roe. And that was that's, this idea that they were all against it is just ridiculous. And this is the guy who says the state should be able to have it. We're in a state where in six weeks, you don't even know whether you're pregnant or not, but you cannot see a doctor have your and have him decide on what your circumstances are, whether you need help. The idea that states are able to do this is a little like saying we're going to turn civil rights back to the states, let each state have a different rule. Look, there's so many young women who have been, including a young woman who just was murdered, and he, he went to the funeral. Uh, the idea that she was murdered by, a, by, a, by an immigrant coming in, they talk about that. But here's the deal. There's a lot of young women to be raped by their, by their in-laws, by their, by, by their spouses brothers and sisters by oh, it's just it's just, it's just ridiculous and they can do nothing about it and they try to arrest them when they cross state lines thank you there have been many young women murdered by the same people he allows to come across our border we have a border that's the most dangerous place anywhere in the world consider the most dangerous place anywhere in the world and he opened it up and these killers are coming into our country and they are raping and killing women and it's a terrible thing as far as the abortion is concerned it is now back with the states the states are voting uh, in many cases, the, it's a, frankly a very liberal decision. In many cases, it's the opposite. But they're voting, and it's bringing it back to the vote of the people, which is what everybody wanted, including the founders, if they knew about this issue, which, frankly, they didn't. But they would have been, everybody wanted brought back. Ronald Reagan wanted it brought back. He wasn't able to get it. Everybody wanted it brought back, and many presidents had tried to get it back. I was the one to do it. And again, this gives it the vote of the people, and that's where they wanted it. Every legal scholar wanted it that way. So here's my question on this, right? Everyone's talking about the voice of the people, the voice of the people. Give it back to the people. What about the voice of the baby? Who's thinking about the baby? And we're not talking about those who are who have been essayed or abused. We're not talking about that. We're talking about these individuals, you know, this sexually free society that feels like it's okay to open up your legs to any and everything. And then when you get popped up, you want to delete it because you made a poor decision. And then we have the argument, it's a woman's body. No, it's not. It's no longer your body once a baby has entered it. It's your body. If you think I'm lying, get pregnant and try to eat something that that baby doesn't agree with. See what happens. Try to lay in a position that baby doesn't agree with. See how your body responds to it. So we have to stop with the argument, it's the woman's body. The minute you get pregnant, it's no longer just your body. There's a baby in there. There's a growing life. Who is going to be the voice of the baby? You know, the future generation. The future. Who's going to be their voice? They didn't ask to be here. They didn't ask you to open your leg. I can understand if your life is in danger. I can understand if you were SA. I wish even in those cases there was a way around the baby not being terminated. But I can completely understand it. But something you chose to willingly do. And oh my God, I'm pregnant. I didn't mean to get pregnant. It's too soon. I don't want a baby. I don't want to mess up my shape. Shut up. Sit down. You should have thought about that before you opened your legs. Isn't that what your parents told you? See, when we were in high school, we learned about sex education. But now we just want to control, all, delete all of our problems away. A baby is a life. It's not a computer software program. It's not an it or a thing or an entity the way we want to try to disconnect from it to make it okay to make the decisions that we make. It's a life. I just want to know who's going to start standing up for the baby. That's my opinion. You can have your own. Staying on the topic of abortion, President Biden, seven states... I'll let you do that. Uh, this is the same topic. Seven states have no legal restrictions on how far into a pregnancy a woman can obtain an abortion. Do you support any legal limits on how late a woman should be able to terminate a pregnancy? I support it Roe v. Wade. It's had three trimesters. First time is between the woman and the doctor. Second time is between the doctor and an extreme situation. The third time is between 
the doctor, I mean, be between the, the woman and the state. The idea that the politicians, they, they, that the founders wanted the politicians to be the ones making decisions about women's health is ridiculous. That's the last, no politician should be making that decision. A doctor should be making those decisions. That's how it should be run. That's what you're going to do. And if I'm elected, I'm going to restore Roe v. Wade. So that means he can take the life of the baby in the ninth month and even after birth, because some states, Democrat run, take it after birth. Again, the governor, former governor of Virginia, put the baby down, then we decide what to do with it. So he's in, he's willing to, as we say, rip the baby out of the womb in the ninth month and kill the baby. Nobody wants that to happen, Democrat or Republican. Nobody wants it to happen. That is simply not true. That Roe v. Wade does not provide for that. That's not the circumstance. Only the woman's life is in danger. She's going to die. That's the only circumstance in which that can happen. But we are not for late-term abortion, period, period, period. Under Roe v. Wade, you have late-term abortion. You can do whatever you want, depending on the state. You can do whatever you want. We don't think that's a good thing. We think it's a radical thing. We think the Democrats are the radicals, not the Republicans. For 51 years, that was the law. 51 years, Constitutional Scholarship said it was the right way to go. 51 years, and it was taken away because this guy put very conservative members on the Supreme Court. He takes credit for taking it away. What's he going to do? What's he going to do, in fact, if the, if the MAGA Republicans, he gets elected, and the MAGA Republicans control the Congress, and they pass a universal ban on abortion, period, across the board? six weeks or seven or eight or ten weeks, something very, very conservative. Is he going to sign that bill? I'll veto it. He'll sign it. Thank you. President Trump, um, staying on the topic of immigration, you've said that you're going to carry out, quote, the largest domestic deportation operation in American history, unquote. Does that mean that you will deport every undocumented immigrant in America, including those who have jobs, including those whose spouses are citizens, and including those who have lived here for decades? And if so, how will you do it? Uh, just one second. He said we killed three people. The people we killed are al-Baghdadi and Soleimani, the two greatest terrorists, biggest terrorists anywhere in the world. And it had a huge impact on everything, not just border, on everything. He's the one that killed people with the bad water, including hundreds of thousands of people dying and also killing our citizens when they come in. We, we are living right now in a rat's nest. They're killing our people in New York, in California, in every state in the union because we don't have borders anymore. Every state is now a border. And because of his ridiculous, insane, and very stupid policies, people are coming in and they're killing our citizens at a level that we've never seen. We call it migrant crime. I call it Biden migrant crime. They're killing our citizens at a level that we've never seen before. And you're reading it like these three incredible young girls over the last few days. One of them, I just spoke to the mother, and they just had the funeral for this girl, 12 years old. This is horrible what's taking place. What's taking place in our country, we're literally an uncivilized country now. He doesn't want it to be. He just doesn't know. He opened the borders. Nobody's ever seen anything like. And we have to get a lot of these people out and we have to get them out fast because they're going to destroy our country. Just take a look at where they're living. They're living in luxury hotels in New York City and other places. Our veterans are on the street. They're dying because he doesn't care about our veterans. He doesn't care. He doesn't like the military at all. And he doesn't care about our veterans. Nobody been worse. I had the highest approval rating for veterans taking care of the VA. He has the worst. He's gotten rid of all the things that I approved. Joyce, that I got through Congress, all of the different things I approved, they abandoned. We had by far the highest, and now it's down in less than half because he's done all these great things that we did. And I think he did it just because I approved it, which is crazy. But he has killed so many people at our border by Thank allowing you, all of these people to come in. President and it's Biden. a very sad day in America. President Biden. So y'all listen, just like with everything else, Trump answered nothing. He was asked a simple question and he answered what he wanted to. That's why I say, and will continue to say, Trump is the wild card. And I believe it's all orchestrated to keep you looking in one direction, to keep you from seeing what he is ushering in, in the other. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to play the entire debate because it was more of the same Trump gaslighting and Biden looking frail. Although, although now, Biden wasn't holding back. I think the most life I saw out of him the whole debate was when he was firing back at Trump and baby was he firing back. <laughs> Here's the thing, right? They're both too old. If you are asking me who I think is the better candidate, I'm going to tell you neither. One, because Trump isn't telling y'all what he is really planning. And because y'all are not paying attention, you don't see it coming. We're too busy focusing on these celebrities and we're missing the new world order that Trump is trying to usher in. And I'm trying to warn y'all, but I'm just a small channel, so my reach isn't that long. 
and I've even tried reaching out to some larger channels to tell them look y'all need to cover this one because if you are LGBTQ or you have followers who are their lives change immediately when this man gets in office this project 2025 that's high key sitting back in the background waiting to be unleashed baby it's like the ultimate Decepticon just like he didn't answer the question about mass deportation. He stated in Pennsylvania that on day one in office, he's signing into effect the largest deportation effort ever. Problem is, as they asked, does that only mean those who came across the border recently? Or does that include those who have been here for years and working and have families? See, wild card. All of this I identify as, I am a woman but was born a man, terms relating to gender neutrality and gender fluidity, gender sensitivity, all of that disappears. Disappears out of the books. I mean the dictionaries, the encyclopedias, vanish. You're a gay male born male. You're a gay female born female. There's no uno flips, no uno swap. Getting abortion pills through the mail, gone. Affirmative action, gone. Free school meals and Head Start programs, finito. Because they see education as more of a private good than a public one. Ooh, child, and I forgot. When it comes to health care, if you are trans, your health care ends because they will fight to deny gender affirming care to transgender. It cuts Medicaid funding and enforces stricter work requirements to get it, and there will be a limit to lifetime benefits. All of the DEI programs, the diversity, equity, inclusion, gone. He takes a strong stance against what is called radical gender ideology. And he advocates for maintaining a biblically based social science reinforced definition of marriage and family. Husband, man, wife, woman, children, white picket fence, dog. Get it? This includes recognizing only heterosexual men and women, removing protections against discrimination based on sexual gender identity, and eliminating provisions related to diversity, equity, and inclusion, DEI, from federal legislation. Plus, Trump hasn't said anything about speaking to or addressing, stopping, silencing, or dismantling any of these white supremacy hate groups that are ramping up in power and numbers and marching through the street trying to evoke fear. So how much can you be for the blacks, as you call us, and Hispanics when you refuse to address one of the biggest threats to us, and that's the bigots who think they are better than us? You gotta choose your struggle, one or the other. You can't be both. He wouldn't address the insurrection, the coup that was attempted on January 6th. So Trump is definitely the wild card. But I don't think Biden can last in the presidency another four years. He can't. There has to be a consideration for life. I don't know what the government has set up in such cases as these, but at some point you have to say, I'm too old for this. Anything else is selfish. The office of the presidency should be selfless. Let me find someone with younger blood that can step in and take over instead of trying to take the reins yourself, knowing that if that horse takes off, you can't handle it. But they'll be debating again in September and we'll be watching. I feel like I'm waiting on a train wreck that I can see coming, but I don't know how to stop it. <laughs> Outside of choosing new candidates. But we'll see. Drop in the comments and let me know what you think. What you think about this election. What you think about the debates. What you think about these two candidates. I don't want to know who you're choosing. I want to know what you think about the choices. Drop in the comments and let me know. Consider joining the Champagne Gang and the Fierce Fam. Hit that like and subscribe button. Also hit that notification bell so you'll be notified when we jump into wherever we jump into for another show. Until next time, thank you for joining us in Fizz Feed Conversations. Trump Watch 2024. Always remember, if it doesn't cause you to elevate, it's causing you to depreciate. Until we meet again, ta-ta.